Hello fellow haters of the blue and welcome to my channel and also welcome to Heavy Contrast Marines. This is a series where I try to paint the A Space Marine as close as possible to the heavy metal paint job and style using contrast paints and highlights. In this episode, as you can see, we are going to paint an Imperial Fist. So let's get cracking. So, as you can see, I have my model primed with Corax White, and I also did, on top of that, a very thin layer with, uh, with Corax White base, because, uh, as you know, uh, spray paints don't cover perfectly, there are spots where you need to fill in, so I did just that, and while I was at it, I just did a whole coat, so the whole model has the same finish all over. And now I'm going to start with Yanden Yellow, to apply contrast paints on flat panels, what you have to do is work panel by panel and also work the brush in the direction you want the shadows to be. So start where you want the lighter parts and then when you want the shadows. So like this. You see I'm moving the brush from up to down. And just doing one panel. Like so. As you can see, there is more contrast paint here and less on the top, which is what we want. So, our coat of yen and yellow is now dry, and I'm going to do a second one because I want more saturation in the armor in general. But I'm not going to do a regular coat like the other one. What I'm actually going to do is a glaze, but I'm not going to use medium, I'm just going to apply it super thin. What I mean is, don't let it pull, just do a super thin coat. Our second coat of Vienna yellow is dry, and we're going to do now is add a bit of volume to some parts because you can see his, this, his kneecaps are a bit flat. So I'm going to add a bit of shading and also a bit of panel modulation, a bit of extra panel modulation with Gore Grant of Fur. What I'm going to do is apply it, then clean my brush, and then feather it out. You will see it now. While I'm doing this, I will also apply a recess, a recess shade of Gurgrant of Fur. Our shading with gold current affair is now done. And I'm going to move into the highlights. For this, I'm going to start with Phalanx Yellow. I'm going to do an edge highlight all over the model. Also, in places like the kneecaps, I'm going to do a glaze of the same phalanx yellow to add a bit more highlights, a 
bit more volume. As you can see, I have my highlights of uh, Phalanx Yellow finished and the model is looking pretty awesome. And now I'm going to do our final highlight and this is Tone Yellow. And I'm just going to do the same I did before, but in a lower area. So I'm doing small dots in the reflections. And a smaller red highlight. The highlights on the armor are now done and now I'm going to knit up everything that is not yellow armor with Corax White for all the parts and I will do Wraithbone just on all the parts that are going to be bright red which is his helmet and his shoulder trim. With Wraithbone I'm going to do all the parts that are going to be red and with Corax White I'm going to do the rest of the parts that are not yellow. And also, don't forget to do the black rubber part. As you can see, I have all my other colors cleaned up, except for all the metallic parts, which I'm, I'm not going to bother, because I'm going to apply a metal paint over them anyways. And now I'm going to start with the black parts and for that I'm using Grief Charger Grey The Grief Charger Grey is dry and it's given a very bluish tone to those parts that will combine perfectly with the yellow armor. And now I'm going to apply Black Templar over all the same parts that I did Grief Charger Grey. Our Black Templar is now dry and I'm going to highlight all the rubbery parts I'm going to leave the hair for later. And for this I'm going to use Fembrisian Grey. Our highlight of Enrician Grey is now finished and I'm going to do a final one with Ufu and Grey. And I'm just going to do a small dot in its, in its reach. The black parts on the armor are now finished and I'm going to move into the red. That will be his helmet and the shoulder trim. For this I'm using Blood Angels Red. Apply it all over the helmet, always taking care not to mess up anything we have already finished. Also don't let it pull too much. After this coat dries, I'm going to do a second one. I just have applied a second coat of Blood Angels Red and while it dries I'm going to do one coat of Flesh Terrace Red over the eagle on his chest.
Now that we have our flash serious red open, I'm going to do um, a bit of shading onto the blood dangerous red. I'm just going to panel line with this all the helmet. So with the flash serious red now drying both parts, I'm going to move into highlighting the bright red parts. And for that, I'm starting with one right the red. Our highlights of uh, Wild, Wild Rider Red are done, and I'm going to move to Fire Dragon Bright. Again, just do the same highlights, only smaller. Now we're going to move to the last highlight. With this I'm using Lubinath Orange. With our bright red now done, I'm going to move into the darker red. And for this I'm going to use Black Templar. And I'm going to provide a bit of extra shading. In this way I will apply the Black Templar, clean my brush and feather out the rest like that. With the shading on the dark red parts are done I'm going to highlight it and from this I'm using a squeak orange. And now I'm going to move to the last highlight on the dark red part, or part, with KD and Fleshstone. I'm going to just do a small dot with this. With the armor now completed, I'm going to move into the leather. And for this I'm using a mix of two parts Psycho Brown, one part Contrast Medium. So I apply this mix over all the leather parts. Our Psycho Brown is now dry and I'm going to start highlighting it. And I will start with Gorthor Brown. As always, I'm just doing an edge highlight. With the Gorthor Brown now done, I'm going to move into Bane Blade Brown. I'm just going to do the same edge highlight, only thinner and smaller.
our highlight of um, Bainville Plan is now done. And for our last highlight, I'm going to use Karak Stone. And I'm just going to do dots in the corners. With the leather not finished, I'm going to move into his purity seal and I'm going to base coat it all at the same time. For the parchment, I'm going to use a skeleton hoard. And for the wax seal, I'm going to use Bolupus Pink. While my purity seal is drying, I'm going to do a coat of Gilliman flesh all over his face. Watch for pulling, we don't want too much. We just want to establish the basic shapes and volumes. With our contrast paints now dry, I'm going to apply Fire's Layer Flesh. First in the parchment, to divide both strands and also apply it a bit in the top part to create a bit of extra shading towards the top. And I'm also going to use this on his face. I'm going to apply it into his eye sockets, under his eye. Now I'm going to highlight the purity seal with a 50-50 mix of Pink Horror and Septibone. And for our final highlight, I'm going to use pure Septibone. For the parchment on the purity seal, I'm just going to highlight with Pallid Witch Flesh. And finally, I'm just doing a dot highlight with pure white. You know perfectly well that any white would do, but of course you know better, you know what white you should be using. For the script on the purity seal, I'm just taking Psycho Brown, I'm adding a touch of water to, so it flows nicely, and I'm going to do just some squiggles. It's now time to move into his face, and for this, I'm going to start highlighting it with Kisle Flesh. With the highlight of Kislev Flesh done, I'm going to move into Flayed One Flesh. I'm just doing the same highlight, only focusing more on the top parts of each highlight to create a kind of semi-fold effect. So for example, the top of the bridge of the nose, but also the tip, top of his eyebrows, With the highlight of Flayed One Flesh done, I'm going to do a last one using Pallid Witch Flesh. This would be really just 
a couple of points just to reinforce the whole thing. So just the very top and most prominent features. Now I'm going to move into adding a bit of color to his face. And for this I'm just turning Volupus Pink into a glaze, just by adding water. You can see the kind of consistency we're going for. We super thin. We don't need to add contrast medium because we're not treating this as a contrast paint. We're not going to do the kind of contrast thing. And so we can just get away with it being like this. Apply this to his nose his cheeks. As you can see the face now has a bit more life in it and I'm going to add even more colors using Pterodon Turquoise again in the same manner. Look at how almost invisible that is. And we're going to shade his bird stubble in. And this color works sublimely well for bird stubble. For a final step, I'm going back to Palette Witch Flesh and I'm going to add the highlight back into the top of his nose that was lost with the glaze and again do the ones here, top of his upper lip and I will also do the one on his lower lip. His face is now finished and I will paint his eyes but not on camera because it's not in a good position to do it on camera because I'm an idiot and I glued the whole thing together. And I also already did a video on painting eyes. So if you want to see how I paint eyes, go check this video. And now we're going to move into his hair and first with Thunderhawk Blue I'm just going to do a small highlight toward the back of his head. With that highlight done, I'm going to move into Fern Greasy and Grey and I'm just going to do an edge highlight around the front of his head. You are now going to move into the last highlight and for that I'm using Ulfu and Grey we are doing the same highlight with it with Fenrisium, but just smaller. Now, with his face and hair now done, the only thing left before we tackle metallics is the eye of his helmet. So we're going to do that now. And we're going to start with a very thin glaze of Talasar Blue. It's not thin in any way, just with, with contrast or anything, just apply it very thinly. Be careful not to touch any of the blue. Just like that. Our Talosaur blue is now dry and I'm going to move into Ultramarine's blue and just do apply this paint to the top corner of the eye. And for the last step with contrast we're going to do a very small dot with Black Templar we're going to move now into highlighting the eye and for that I'm using Bahar of Blue and I'm going to do a very small line that ends in the lower part of the eye. For our second highlight we're going to use Blue Horror in the same way, just taking less space. Now we're going to move into white and I'm going to use it in two ways. First of all I'm going to make a very small dot into the front and another small dot into the darkest part. We're now going to move into doing all the metal in the model and we're going to base coat them at the same time. For the silver bits I'm going to use Iron Breaker 
and for the gold parts I'm going to use Retributor Armor. So with the Metal Snow base coated, I'm going first to shade all the gold using Gulliman Flesh. Now I'm going to shade all the silver metal areas with a mix of 4 parts contrast medium and 1 part black templar. I always say this, but this mix has substituted non oil for me. It's just so much better in every single way. And now for the last steps in our metallics, I'm going to highlight all of them using Storehouse Silver. So I will use this as an edge highlight in both the gold and the silver parts. So with that last step done, the model is actually finished. I also took the liberty to finish his base and you may have noticed I didn't paint his bolter case in, in this video. That's because you cannot really get a deep jet black with contrast paint and that's what I wanted to, to do, so, so I just painted it the regular way. I already have a video on how to paint black using this exact same recipe. So if you want to see how I painted this, go check this video. So I really hope you liked this video. And as always, I catch you in the next one. Bye.